Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. As you know, my main topic of uh, discussion in all of my videos is abrupt climate change, how the system is changing very, very rapidly, and what that means for humanity. What that meant means for our planet based on paleo records, and what um, is happening in the present and projections about the uh, future, near-term future, long-term future, all of these things. And abrupt climate change does give a lot of people existential angst, but it's not the only thing out there that um, has existential um, threats for us. So I'm gonna talk about some of these other things like the risk to humanity from asteroid and meteor impacts, for example. I'll talk about the risks from super volcanoes in, in another video at some point in the future. And some of the other um, risks, such as, you know, the ongoing risks of nuclear um, catastrophe, nuclear holocaust with uh, um, the um, resulting um, winters, you know, uh, that could, could happen basically, um, because of the uh, dust clouds and stuff. You know, I'll probably end up talking about cyber hacking and uh, things like that. I mean, Brazil um, just lost a lot of their power grid again um, because of, uh, they think it's some um, e electromagnetic force pulse or something. You know, who knows, you know, what the actual cause is. Many people are saying it's just poor infrastructure, but some are saying there's you know, nefarious forces uh, at work. So I'm going to focus this video on basically near-Earth objects and the risks to humanity from that. I've just finished reading this book um, called Fire in the Sky, Cosmic Collisions, Killer Asteroids, and the Race to Defend Earth by Gordon L. Dillo. So there's a lot of things covered in here. So I'm going to uh, basically talk about some of the things that are mentioned in this text, but also, you know, some of the good websites that are out there, for example, to allow you to calculate the effects. If you know a given size or diameter of an incoming meteorite, meteoroid, asteroid, um, if you know, so they know the diameter, if you know the velocity it's coming in at, if you know the angle it's expected to hit the Earth in, you know, when you're, say, 100 kilometers away, you can calculate the damage effects in your region from it. It's, it's a couple, there's a couple interesting websites where it would allow you to do this in a very user-friendly manner. So let's get right into this uh, topic here. Sorry, uh, no Shackleton again today. This is, this is uh, he's avoiding me lately. I'm not sure why. I think it's just too hot. So if you just Google risk equals the consequence times the likelihood. So it's the likelihood or probability of something occurring times the consequence or the impact or the result if, if that particular um, thing happens. So if I Google, I'm in Google Images and I Google this and here's a slide, <laughs> risk analysis. There you go. This is all you need to know really. Risk equals likelihood of something happening times the consequence. And you can see there's um, these risk assessment matrices, if you like. So if the likelihood is, is not happening, highly unlikely, unlikely to likely up here, and if the consequences to us is nothing, slightly harmful, harmful, extremely harmful, then as you look in these different boxes, for example, if an event is very likely and extremely har harmful, then there's extreme risk. And I, you know, climate change has to fit into there. If the likelihood is very highly unlikely, like the Earth getting hit from a one kilometer or 10 kilometer um, asteroid, then the, and, and the consequences are extremely harmful, then the risk rises accordingly. Okay, so this is like, so, you, so we try to assess hazards based on this sort of risk assessment matrix. This is um, my blog, paulbeckwith.net, so please check it out. 
Um, the last post recently done was on dynamic systems and tipping points um, and, and uh, you know, how the, specifically in ocean acidification. Okay. Um, okay, so this is, um, I'm on Google Earth and I searched for um, the Chick Jula Crater because I know this is an area in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico where a 10 kilometer asteroid or larger hit the earth about 66 million years ago. The impact caused ecosystems to collapse across the entire world and brought the Mesozoic era, the age of dinosaurs, to a sudden and dramatic close. In the first few million years after the impact, only small animals thrived. It was the beginning of the age of mammals. Eventually, larger mammals evolved and dominated the earth. Among them were the early primates, whose evolution would lead to a very promising or not promising direction, depending on your point of view, at least for humans. So this is the site here of the crater um, where, where a large 10 kilometer diameter asteroid impacted and the effects were large enough to basically make the dinosaurs extinct. These other sites here, for example, are sites where we've studied these sites and seen how the impact um, affected these sites. So ejecta from the impact at this site, for example, here is about 12 centimeters thick. There's large shock quartz grains, iridium, which is high concentrations in a lot of asteroids. So there's an iridium layer around this deposited around the Earth um, from uh, when there's a large asteroid impact. And that's one of the ways we can tell that was, there was an impact at a certain time. Nickel rich, spindles and tectite. So this was likely, you know, a nickel, iron nickel, um, 10 kilometer um, diameter asteroid. Mosasaurs are marine reptiles that prowled the sea, seas prior to this extinction event. They were powerful swimmers, but they went extinct after that event. This is another site, finding the crater, a deep sea core, about 2,500 meters below the sea. The KT ejecta layer at this site is about two centimeters thick. So the ash and ejecta from the impact, the, the asteroid hit, all this stuff was sent up, ejected. So here there's a, there's a layer uh, on the ocean floor, two centimeters thick, that contains spirals and shocked quartz. Shock quartz is an indication that there was a catastrophic impact and is indicative of an asteroid impact. The, the iridium concentration um, is also high there. Okay, um, so you can go to these other sites here. For example, here it's a five meter thick ejecta um, deposit. There's impact breccia, which is only from impacts, broken up rock. Okay. Um, and uh, okay, so you can just, let's have a look here at some of the others. Cretaceous mudstone just below the KT boundary. Um, evidence of boulders on top of shallow marine sediments is consistent with a tsunami that would have occurred in this area as a result of an impact. So the impact here, see a tsunami penetrated far into North America. Um, this site here, a uh, coastal environment during the Cretaceous, five meter thick uh, KT event layer. Um, based on the thickness of the debris deposit, it's possible that dinosaurs living in this region may have actually witnessed the impact that would bring about their demise. Okay, and we can find all other, you know, high levels of iridium here. Um, four types of impact evidence, spherules, shock quartz, grains, high iridium, 20.8 parts per billion, um, bones from various species, etc. Okay, so this is, if you go down, if you Google Google Earth, open it up and just go on, look for the day the dinosaurs died, then you can get all of this evidence from that impact. So if we go to, you know, if we look at for information on the Chick Jula crater, um, 
Okay, it's uh, it was formed by a large asteroid or comet about 11. To, now they say 11 to 81 kilometers in diameter. I mean, most of the um, I mean that number is you know it depends. Like if the thing was going slow, it would need a larger diameter to cause the damage that, that happened. And if the if the um, asteroid or comet was going much, much faster, then it could be much smaller size to create this damage. So there is some uncertainty on the size of it, um, the size basically and the um, speed of the impactor and perhaps even the angle at which it was coming in to, to hit the Earth. So we lost 75% um, of all plant and animal species on Earth. Um, including the dinosaurs, the non-avian dinosaurs. Smaller dinosaurs that flew have evolved into birds. Now the crater is estimated to be 150 kilometers in diameter, 20 kilometers in depth, well into the continental crust. Um, and it's uh, a, the, um, well into the continental crust of the region of about 10 to 30 kilometers. Okay, um, so the diameter, this is the diameter of the crater, the depth, the impactor, you know, about 10 kilometers, most people say. Um, although they give a range here, which is outside of 10, you know, which is interesting. 66.043 uh, plus or minus 0 0.011 million years ago. Okay, now it talks about, this is the location of it, Mexico, um, Chicxulú near the city. Um, this is a, a gravity anomaly map of the impact area. And you can see these rings here, which are indicative. These are on the ocean floor, um, the, the, the rings. So, so that can be detected from gravity anomaly. And, uh, you know, these are characteristics of a very large um, impact crater and then the rocks and so on, um, you know, animations on how it's affected and, and so on. It's all here on this site. So I highly recommend that you have a look at it. Now, coming to more recent times, we have Meteor Crater in Arizona here. And if you've never been it, it's well worth going to. I'm told I haven't made it there yet, but this place is called Meteor Crater. Okay, so it was an impact. Um, this is the diameter of the crater, 0.737 or just over a kilometer diameter, depth 560 feet. Um, there's a rim, um, 50,000 years old, um, iron meteorite. Okay, um, used to be called, okay, so there's other names for it. It used to be called Canyon Diablo Crater. Um, scientists refer to this as the Behringer Crater. Um, and it's believed, okay, um, the size of the meteor that caused this should be in there somewhere. Uh, the impactor diameter, okay, 50 meters in diameter, the, the rock that hit it, 160 or 160 feet in diameter. Okay, so not a enormous size to do this type of damage. So um, the object that excavated the crater was a nickel iron meteorite, so very dense, about 50 meters or 160 feet across. The speed of the impact has been a subject of some debate. Modeling initially suggested it hit at 45,000 miles per hour, which is 20 kilometers per second. More recent evidence suggests the impact was slower, 29,000 miles per hour, 12.8 kilometers a second. Half of the impactor's bulk vaporized during its descent through the atmosphere, and then the rest of it exploded, you know, with a force of 10 megatons. Um, this guy, the guy Behringer, an, who owned um, iron mines, um, actually tried to mine and dig dug holes into the crater to try to recover iron nickel and there was nothing there. So the thing basically disintegrated, it blew up and created the, the crater. So here's, there's an interesting history of it, um, view of it from 36,000 feet or 11,000 meters over here. Okay, so Behringer, very, very interesting history 
of the um, what was what was done in trying to excavate the crater. I'll continue um, this topic. Thanks for listening.